Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Mark Faber talks about which assets he thinks investors should consider to protect their wealth through the turmoil he sees ahead. Uh, nobody knows for sure. You know, as I said, the Bank of England blinked and when things became tough, they're fighting inflation, but then they stepped into the bond market to support it. So who knows? Uh, but my view is, I think we are in a situation where an investor has to ask himself, okay, I agree to some extent with Mark. I may think that it's not going to be as bad as he says, but it could be worse and this and that. And uh, that asset prices will go down. So how do I hedge? Now, the only hedging mechanism that I think makes sense is diversification. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I look at uh, today's performances of markets uh, and assets, uh, the, the asset class that went up is oil and gas, energy. Uh, the best performing is the one that was hated the most by the Greens, coal. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing, you know, when you think about it. They have all the negative things about coal and it's been performing wonderfully. And there are lots of coal stocks that are up four or five times in one year. Anyway, uh, I, I think I described briefly <coughs> how inflation touches different sectors of the economy at different times. So we are the asset inflation 1981 to recently. Now we may have consumer price inflation, which then leads to higher interest rates structurally. Mm -hmm. These are long cycles. They can last 20 years. So let's assume that interest rates go up for a long time, like between 1942 and 1980. Then uh, you can have rising earnings and you can have an economy that actually moves sidewards uh, and uh, stocks in real terms lose their value. That was the market in the US between 66 and 1982 was essentially flat. It didn't go up, but it was essentially flat. If you include the dividends, you didn't do all that bad because the dividends were relatively high, which is not the case now. But uh, in real terms, inflation adjusted, and that was reflected in the weakness of the US dollar. Uh, stocks went down by 70%, okay? So you take a peak somewhere 2018, 2019, 2020, whenever you want to take the peak, and not every stock peaked out the same day. Uh, the last ones to peak out was uh, fun stocks like Apple, they peaked out in January of this year. Mm -hmm. But most stocks peaked out, the meme stocks, the SPACs and so forth, they peaked out in January, February, March, 2020. So by, no, sorry, they peaked 21. out in 2021. Right. Uh, so in uh, December 2021, many stocks had already peaked much earlier. And you can follow this if you look at the number of new highs in the market and at the advanced decline line and at the number of stocks above the 200 day moving average and so forth and so on. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, different assets peak out at different times. And my sense is that we are in a period of a lengthy, unattractive environment for assets. Whether you own real estate, the government is going to F you because they're going to increase taxes on real estate or on transactions. Or in the socialist uh, states in the US, they'll impose rent controls. Mm -hmm. Rent controls is for the business owner, for the owner of, a, of say, uh, apartment buildings, uh, the worst, because his cost of maintenance go up, but he can't charge more to his tenants. Right. It caps your earning potential, but your costs are not capped. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the people that run the, the governments nowadays, they're bloody interventionists. That's the biggest problem. Someone recently wrote about Liz Truss, and she's in good company, the new premier in England. He said the problem is she's not very intelligent, but she thinks she's intelligent. That is a, a feature of all politicians. They all think they're smart. 
they all think they should intervene in the economy. I mean, Biden, you look at him, he intervenes continuously and says continuously something about things he has no clue about. I mean, I'm not a fan of Trump, but to be fair to Trump, he reduced regulation. This is the only thing he did. I'm an international person. I'm Swiss. I had and still have my business based in Hong Kong, but I live in Thailand. Now, I want to have some assets in Thailand because I live here. Because I think maybe one day I can't remit money from the US to Thailand or I can't remit money from Switzerland to Thailand and so forth and so on. So I have some assets here. Not because I have great confidence in Thailand, but I have to say it's a military government and I feel much freer under my military government here than under the Swiss democratically elected government in Switzerland. Wow. And I don't say this easily. I mean, I've been thinking about it. But anyway, so I have some money here. First of all, the property is not mine. It's in my wife and daughter's name. And But the bank account is in my name and the portfolio is in my name. And I have some properties in Vietnam and some in stock investments in Vietnam. But uh, the logistic is the custody is in Vietnam. It's not Vietnamese stocks held through an American bank. You understand? This I want to tell your viewers. If you want the geographical uh, diversification, you can't hold all your assets in one bank and they have own shares in Brazil and some in Russia and some there. You have to have the custody in different geographical locations. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Uh, just uh, a friend of mine, he sent me the, the front page of a Bloomberg, I think it's Business Week or whatever it is, and it shows the dollar getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Whenever I see headlines on front pages, uh, it's kind of a contrarian signal. Makes you think now, there's time for a reversal. You, you understand? Nobody has yet told me, hey, how do you will you uh, recycle all these batteries that will come on stream and the blades of windmills that they want to drive uh, or supply the energy uh, from in Germany and so forth. And nobody has told me what will really happen when the dollar will begin to weaken considerably. Now, you may say, Mark, don't be stupid. The dollar will never be weak. OK, then I'm stupid to think about it. But in my view, the likelihood that the dollar will one day be uh, kind of the currency that nobody wants is, in my opinion, quite likely. I'm not telling you that it's happening. It will happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I don't know from what point it will happen, but one day the dollar will become very weak. And so, at that stage, it will become very interesting what happens to interest rates and what happens to the economy and so forth and so on. I don't want to sound overly bullish and I don't want to sound overly bearish, but if I look at the US market compared to the emerging markets and compared to European markets, uh, it has outperformed just about everything yep. over the last uh, 11 years. And uh, emerging markets have performed very badly relative to the US since 2015. Some a bit later, some a bit earlier. I think that in emerging economies, that's my observation. I'm not bullish about Thailand, but I'm realistically looking at the economy, the advantages it had and it has and the disadvantage, disadvantages. I think in Thailand, the valuations are okay. You know, you buy today, maybe they'll drop another 30%. But eventually they'll be higher. Mm -hmm. You buy today the same semiconductors in the US, I'm not sure they'll be much higher 10 years from now. Because I've seen Cisco. Cisco 
Nvidia was like Cisco in nine, in year 99 2000. Yep. Never recovered. And so I think that in emerging economies when I look at Latin America and you said at the beginning Mark there are these and these and these factors that may have a negative impact I said maybe all of them come into play. Mm -hmm. Then I would say Latin America is probably geographically the place that could maybe stay out of World War Three, World War Four, you know, of a major conflict. So to have some assets in Argentina and Brazil may not be so stupid. Okay. So, you and know, these Jeremy... markets are really depressed. Earlier this year, I wrote about Turkey, that the market was incredibly cheap because the stock market didn't collapse in local currency, but the currency had collapsed. Right. And this year, actually, Turkish stocks, you can look up the, T, the Turkish fund listed in New York is in dollars terms. It's up like 25%, 30%. Oh, all right. so one well, of the so few assets that went up this year. Yeah. I also think in China, there are now some good companies that are reasonably priced. Vietnam is the country that is interesting. <coughs> it has essentially a strong economy. The economy is doing well. The stock market has been hit very hard because there was excess speculation before. But now I think it will go lower. But I believe equally uh, there are some good companies that are reasonably priced for the first time in many years. years. In Indonesia, you have reasonably priced companies. Now, in a depression, uh, the expression reasonably priced uh, has a different meaning because in a depression, when earnings contract, the dividend will have to be cut. Right. You know, Hong Kong shares are dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. So let me ask you this then. So there's the old expression that when the U.S. gets the sniffles, the rest of the world gets pneumonia, right? It sounds like you think that the U.S. still has the majority of its reckoning ahead of it right now from an asset yes. standpoint. So yes. it, it is, is your sort of general outlook here, um, the, the, patience is going to serve today's investor well, um, both in terms of perhaps getting lower prices and better valuations in the future in the U.S., but of course, if the U.S. stumbles, even though Hong Kong is dirt cheap right now, it might get dirtier and cheaper, you know, Correct. as it, it reacts to the U.S. <laughs> shockwaves. So. Right. Yes, that, uh, you know, is, but I look at this way because I'm an asset holder and uh, I may be wrong because I don't have major hedges. My hedge is that I have a relatively large cash position which includes bonds that mature within a year or two. But I look at it this way. I think a lot of people will lose all their money. A lot of people will lose 50%. I hope I will only lose, say, 15 to 20%. I think this is a, in an asset price collapse, like the 30s, uh, I don't think many people made money. Uh, there was a big opportunity to make money in the 20s and 30s. And uh, I, all, I also say this today in illegal activity, smuggling, black markets. Because if you think about it, the government intervenes more and more. Don't think in the world that government officials are like angels and all the businessmen are evil <laughs> and all the businessmen cheat and uh, do funny things, but the government is honest. Not at all. If you look at the fight of the struggle between the mafia and the government uh, from the times of the prohibition until today, well, maybe uh, the government officially has won, or I could argue, no, <laughs> the mafia has taken over the government. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yep. It's become very, very corrupt. Uh, don't believe uh, for a second that in Western democracies, the governments are nice people. No, they're all utterly corrupt. They all, um, they, they all take money. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. 
How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? How should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.